Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking about the passage of an action potential along a neuron or nerve cell. Now in a previous video I've spoke about how we generate that action potential from what's called resting potential within the axon. This video is about how the action potential gets propagated or how it moves along that particular axon. And in that video I actually said that nothing physically moves down the length of the axon of the neuron when this uh, nerve impulse or action potential actually gets transmitted. It's all through the movement of sodium and potassium ions essentially in and out along the length of this particular axon. So let's speak about how we're going to get this action potential actually from one end of the axon to the other. Now, what I've got here, if I just label this, this image here represents one just segment of an axon. So here's our axon segment and I've just repeated it three times over so it's not three separate axons this is uh, the same picture it's just I'm going to discuss this in three stages and I'm going to use the three images to almost give a sort of timeline of events to what happens. So we need to first of all acknowledge that when uh, sodium ions rush in to the axon so when voltage-gated sodium channels open and sodium rushes in, that's when we get this wave of depolarization. So again, I'm presuming with this video that you've perhaps watched my other one on how we get an action potential, how we get these periods of depolarization and repolarization. This video is purely about how we pass the action potential along. So when positively charged sodium ions rush in to a depolarized region of the neuron, we find they're actually attracted to neighbouring regions. So first of all, before we begin anything, we need to just label this axon segment with a few charge uh, charges. So what we're going to have if you recall, we have a negative resting potential inside of the axon and outside So this white region here is representing a more positive region. You might recall that we're actively pumping out sodium ions outside, so it's more positive, but we're also uh, leaking a lot more potassium than sodium to the outside region of the neuron. So the outside is more positive relative to the inside. The inside is minus 70 millivolts, so it's negatively charged. Now what happens is that sodium rushes in. And that's what we call depolarization. So sodium actually rushes in. So we'll just have a few arrows here. It happens on both sides. So what we have is Na plus so sodium ions rushing into this region. And that, therefore, creates this difference in charge. We end up getting positive charges inside, and because we've had sodium rushing in, the outside becomes more negative. So the first thing that happens is sodium rushes into this axon segment. Now when sodium rushes in, when these positively charged sodium ions have rushed into this depolarized region of the neuron, we find that they are attracted sideways. Now that's because the regions on either side of the depolarized region have a more negative charge. So if we were to draw a circle around this, we can see this positive part here is attracted to this negative region here. So we get this positive negative attraction, and what we set up is a localized current or circuit. So this region here, we'll just make a little note, that what we're setting up is a localized current or circuit in this portion right here. So a localized current or circuit because the positive is attracted to the negative region adjacent to it. Now when that happens, that causes the opening 
of adjacent voltage-gated sodium channels further along the axon in this sort of second box, if you like, the second part of the axon segment. Now, as those regions begin to depolarize, the regions before them start to repolarize. If you remember, we're restoring the resting potential. So as the second box, if you like, depolarizes, the bit before it will repolarize. And that's because potassium leaves the axon through potassium-gated channels. You might recall in, a, in the previous video that once we reach the overshoot of plus 40 millivolts, sodium channels close, potassium channels open, and potassium rushes back out to repolarize the axon. So if we were to look at the setup of the charges, what we'd find is that because we've had this attraction or localised current set up, sodium channels open in the second region, so we can, we'll use the second diagram here to represent this, so we've had the movement of sodium in, in this region again, so this part becomes positively charged, and once again, the part outside relative becomes negative. This first region, or rather let's put this third region in because we've not involved this region yet, we still have a negative portion here and positive charge here, so we've not used this third box. But in this first segment on the second picture, we said that potassium ions are leaving and this is in the phase of repolarization. So if we draw four arrows out and we refer to potassium, then what we ultimately do is restore our negative potential in this region here. And as you can guess, the region outside returns to its positive polarity. So if you look at the top two uh, axon segments from these pictures, it looks as if where I just draw an asterisk here. So we've had sodium rush in and depolarise that region. That ultimately sets up a localised current which will trigger depolarisation in, where I've drawn another asterisk, in the second region. So you can see it's almost like shifting this axon, axon rather, potential. But again, nothing physically is moving down the length of this axon. It's all about the movement of sodium potassium in and out. Now, in this way, what we're getting is the action potential propagated along the axon. So as you can imagine, now that we've set up a current here, just where I've drawn a circle, because the positive and negative charges attract, we've got another localised current, so we can draw an arrow to this part, we've got another localised current set up there. So if we were to now draw on this third uh, axon segment at the bottom, remember this is one nerve just shown in stages, because this positive and negative attracted on picture two and picture three, this would once again trigger, as you might be able to guess, sodium entry into this region here as this region depolarises. The region before repolarizes as potassium leaves. So if we were to put charges in place, we'd see that in this region it would become more positive because sodium has come in. And this region now becomes negative. Sorry, I should have really coloured that in green to fit with the rest, but you get the idea. For where the potassium is leaking out, that restores this negative potential inside. And we get a return to a positive potential outside. And in this third region, or in the third diagram, but in this first segment, we have a state where we've restored the potential, so our resting potential ultimately in this region here, where I'm just highlighting. But neither depolarization nor repolarization is happening. We will say that region of the axon is resting. So ultimately, this axon goes through periods of 
depolarizing, repolarizing, and resting. So if we were to just write in, we could almost say that if I just put, use the letter D for depolarization, so when this region here at the top depolarizes, say RE for resting, this is resting, this is resting, this section. This triggers in the second image, this part is depolarizing. The part before it is, if I use an REP for repolarizing, and then this section would be the resting area. That will trigger, if we look at the third image, this part would be depolarizing. This part is repolarizing behind it, and this first region is now resting. And if you have a look at where the Ds are, we've got a period of depolarization here, here, and here. So you can see this depolarization, a wave of depolarization, is moving along the axon segment. In this way, what we are getting is a passage of an action potential. And that's how this action potential gets propagated along the length of the neuron. Now I realise if you look at the screen there's a lot of pluses and negatives. So this is one video that I'll just, just keep watching and see the order that I've drawn these pluses and minuses to understand how this is working. Now on another video I'm going to talk about passage of an action potential in a myelinated neuron compared to an unmyelinated neuron. Because this movement or this description that I've given for this action potential does apply to both, but you'll notice in the myelinated neurons, those with myelin sheath, we get a sort of jump, if you like, of the uh, action potential from node to node. It's something called saltatory conduction, but in the separate video I'll discuss that. So there we have a little bit of information about the passage of an action potential along a neuron. A sodium rush is in, the positive region is attracted to the negative adjacent region inside of the axon, which opens up adjacent voltage-gated channels. As those adjacent regions become depolarised, the previous regions become repolarised, and in that way we get this wave of depolarisation moving along the length of the neuron. Okay, hope all that helps.